The first half of 1990 was a time of trouble in All Japan Pro Wrestling. When we last left the company, Genichiro Tenryu had overtaken Jumbo Suruda and became the Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion. By the end of 89, however, he had dropped the title back to Suruda, and soon after, Tenryu left the company altogether to help form the Super World of Sports promotion. And just like that, all the work put into making Tenryu a top star in All Japan was gone. With Tenryu gone and the company in flux, the responsibility of being the top man in All Japan once again fell to Jumbo Suruda. The Triple Crown Championship jumps from Suruda to Terry Gordy to Stan Hansen, two gaijins in a row holding the top prize in All Japan. While Suruda could still go and carry the banner for the company, it was becoming clear that All Japan needed a fresh native talent to carry them into the new decade. Enter Tiger Mask 2. The Tiger Mask persona is based on a manga character in Japan that New Japan Pro Wrestling licensed to allow Satoru Sayama to wrestle under the mask and gimmick. After Sayama left New Japan in 1983, the rights to the Tiger Mask character were purchased by All Japan Pro Wrestling in 1984. They passed on the gimmick to a young wrestler who had just completed his excursion in Mexico, Mitsuharu Misawa. And so we have Tiger Mask 2. Tiger Mask 2 had a long but generally unnotable run as NWA International Junior Heavyweight Champion before vacating the belt to graduate as a heavyweight in June of 1986. After graduating to heavyweight, Tiger Mask 2 would sporadically team with Jumbo Saruda and his stable of allies, even winning the PWF World Tag Team Championships with Saruda for a brief 8 days in 1987. On March 9, 1988, Tiger Mask 2 would take on Suruda in a first-time encounter. Tiger Mask 2 spends the whole first half of the match with a cautious headlock to try and keep Suruda in place. Through all of Suruda's attempts to create space and go into an offensive mode, Tiger Mask relentlessly goes after the headlock. This continues for the whole first half of the match, a solid 10 minutes of just working a headlock. That's right folks, one of the most beloved wrestlers of all time worked a 10-minute Randy Orton special. Never ever let that be forgotten. Personally, I wasn't so bothered by the cat and mouse nature of the headlock segment. It showed Tiger Mask 2 trying to use fundamentals and technique to try and gain an edge over the much larger and powerful Saruta. For a while, Saruta plays the game, working to get out of the hold. Then he kinda just gets sick of it and drops Tiger Mask 2 right on his head with a brutal backdrop suplex. I'll be honest, I thought the match didn't have anywhere else to go after that. The suplex was so sick that I thought a few more spirited kickouts would be all that Tiger Mask 2 got against Saruta. Instead, Tiger Mask 2 uses his athleticism, some big dives, and some well-timed roll-ups to make us doubt the inevitable result of this match. In the end though, the ace cements his spot with another brutal backdrop that lands Saruta the three and the victory. Fast forward to May 14, 1990. Tiger Mask 2 is tagging with Toshiaki Kawada, another rising star that we've met on this series, against Yoshiaki Yatsu and Samson Fuyuki. The match is pretty by the numbers to begin. Kawada and Tiger Mask 2 impress with their speed and agility, but the grizzled veterans regain control with their power and some brutal looking headbutts from Yatsu. But then, everything changes. <laughs> Tiger Mask 2 makes Kawada undo his mask to reveal the man beneath, Mitsuharu Misawa. And he is greeted like a god. Almost the instant the mask comes off, the crowd erupts into a refrain that we'll be hearing more and more as we continue in All Japan's history. <laughs> Kawada and Misawa handily win the match, and the rise of one of the greatest professional wrestlers in history begins. Misawa puts down a challenge, and a match is set. June 8th, 
Budokan Hall, the ace, Jumbo Saruta, takes on Mitsuharu Misawa. In the build-up to their singles match, the two would meet in a six-man tag team match on May 26th. Standing with Jumbo, junior heavyweight stalwart and technical whiz Masanobu Fuchi, and the innovator of Asian Mist, the great Kabuki. On Misawa's side, two of the hottest prospects of the new generation, former sumo star Akira Tawe, a protege and spiritual successor to Giant Baba, and Kenta Kobashi, a fiery upstart who after losing every singles match for a year after his debut, finally started gaming Steam and even held the All-Asia Tag Team Championships with Misawa earlier in the year. The match gives us a glimpse of what the six-man classics down the line will provide us. Kobashi acts as whipping boy for the veterans. Fuchi serves to bump for the young guns as well as having enough credibility to occasionally put them in their place. And Saruta is the grumpy, old veteran indignant over these scrappy youngins vying for his spot. His disdain for them shines clear when early on in the match, he attacks all three of his opponents in the corner, knocking them off of the apron. It's a clear bully move, trying to put these young guns in their place and display that he's still the dominant ace. Rest assured, Misawa will not stand for it for long. The match proceeds and again, Jumbo tries to bully Misawa by grabbing him from the apron. Misawa has none of it and fires off an elbow strike. And with one blow, a legend is born. Saruta drops from the apron like a stone, selling the shot as a knockout blow. Saruta is down for so long on the floor, hardly moving, that Kabuki actually comes down to check on him. The cell job works. Kirk and Hall go silent, genuinely concerned for the well-being of Saruta. As he lays on the floor, Saruta's outstanding cell job helps to build up one of the most important pieces to the mythology of King's Road. Misawa's elbow is God. With a single blow, Misawa has just sent a warning shot to Saruta's generation and the whole wrestling world. He's here to stay and God help anyone who dares to stand in his way. By the time Saruta recovers, all he wants is vengeance and immediately goes after Misawa, making the match devolve into a heated brawl for a few moments. The complexion of the upcoming match has changed. Misawa isn't going to let himself get pushed around. He will take his spot at the top if he has to. The match continues from there with an extended heat segment on Kobashi that leads into a great finishing stretch that sees Misawa get the decisive victory over Fuchi. The table is set. Misawa versus Saruta. Bring it on. And so, here we are once again at the heart of all Japan's territory, the Nippon Budokan in the main event. To start the match, Misawa's music thunders through the arena. As he's escorted through the crowd by his contemporaries, the crowd roars Misawa's name in time to the beat of his song. It is an iconic greeting that will follow Misawa all the way until the end of his career. By the time he steps foot in the ring, one thing is instantly clear. Misawa is a big forking deal. But standing in his way is a man not yet ready to relinquish his spot. Suruta walks to the ring with purpose, greeted by the familiar chants of Suruta O oh, from the crowd. The crowd respects Jumbo. They even love Jumbo for all the years he's put into entertaining them. But on this night, Misawa is their man. What I find most fascinating about this match are the points of transition where one wrestler takes control over the other. In a match where a rising star is set to take on the top wrestler in the company, this is a significant point to consider when watching the match. It starts with Suruta firmly in control, using his power to shove and bully Misawa. Misawa's first successful offensive maneuver is a dropkick, establishing that his more athletic and agile junior heavyweight style offense is what will give him the edge. 
Jumbo quickly regains control, however, with a well-timed big boot and a thunderous lariat. He picks his spots, using Misawa's momentum against him in order to get back on offense. Again, Misawa relies on his athleticism to get momentum back, countering a Saruta back suplex and following up with a dropkick off the apron to the floor. From there, Misawa adds another layer to his offense, the elbow. Combining that with an over-the-top plancha puts Misawa firmly in control. The following section of the match does drag it down a bit. We go into an extended sequence of Saruta and Misawa trading holds with the underlying theme that Misawa is pretty consistently one step ahead of Saruta. The highlight of the segment is Misawa slapping Saruta, which adds an intensity to the match. This is paid off with Saruta regaining control after a skirmish on the outside, but lacking the same fire and anger that we saw displayed in the May 26 six man tag. Misawa regains control once again with his athleticism, countering a pop up slam with a dropkick. He presses the advantage with a missile dropkick and a splash. As he charges at Saruta for a cross body, however, Saruta catches Misawa and drops him throat first into the top rope. Once again, Saruta has used Misawa's own momentum against him, displaying his experience as the wily veteran. At this point, Saruta enters an extended control segment, bombing on Misawa with a pile driver, the jumping body scissors, and even showing off his own athleticism with a beautiful dropkick. None of his offense can put away Misawa, however. Saruta gets so confident with his string of offense, he even starts climbing the top rope a tactic which has clearly favored Misawa throughout the match. Despite Misawa's best efforts to stop him, Saruta nails a top rope knee strike but again, only gets a 2. Firmly in control, Saruta follows up with his patented folding power bomb but again, only gets a 2. With Misawa so deep in the hole, it takes ingenuity to regain momentum. He counters an attempt at a double arm suplex into a backslide and follows up with a stiff elbow to rock Saruta. Though the shot lands, Misawa is too battered to follow up convincingly. All he's done is create a little space to hopefully recover. This is the first time that Misawa has stopped Saruta's momentum with basic wrestling acumen as opposed to flashy athleticism. The addition of a power strike like the elbow changes the dynamic of the match significantly. Now. Not only is Misawa the faster of the two wrestlers, he also might just be the more well-rounded and versatile of the two as well. Throw in a cross body off the top rope and a gorgeous bridging O'Connor roll and we start to see that Misawa has a variety of methods to potentially put down Saruta. But Saruta isn't out of tricks yet. Again, he is able to use Misawa's own momentum against him as Saruta gets his knees up to counter a splash. Saruta is in a panic though. He can sense that he is in danger and batters Misawa with two brutal lariats. Misawa gets a brief respite, however, blocking a backdrop suplex attempt to stop Saruta's momentum. He follows up with a bridging German suplex that only gets a two. Saruta fights back by countering a Tiger Driver attempt into a pin and following up with his jumping knee strike. When he sends Misawa into the corner, Misawa tries to counter with a springboard headbutt, but Saruta catches him with an elbow strike to drop Misawa. But it's a tactical error. Saruta doesn't have the same power and technique behind his elbow and only ends up hurting himself by landing the blow. Saruta panics and charges for a dropkick, trying to match the athleticism of his opponent. But Misawa has learned Saruta's trick. Use your opponent's momentum against them. A simple step to the side sends Saruta crashing into the ropes. The two men struggle over suplex attempts, reversing and countering each other until Saruta lands on Misawa in a pinning predicament. But as we saw when they trade holds, Misawa is one step ahead, reversing Saruta's pin to get the three count in the main event at Budokan Hall. <laughs> History is made. As the story goes, Giant Baba made the decision to put Misawa over in this match on the day of the event. After hearing the crowd chanting Misawa's name while standing in line to get into the building and before the show began. Misawa's merch numbers had also skyrocketed since he lost the Tiger Mask persona 
and Baba decided it was time to cement him as the next top star of All Japan. On the June 18, 1990 edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer said of the match, I can't describe just how awesome this was as both a match and a spectacle. I can't begin to describe the post-match pandemonium, but there were people in the crowd literally crying because the match was so good. He rated the match 5 stars plus, calling it better than the Chi-Town Rumble and Wrestle War Flair Steamboat matches. This is a match that exists and is revered for more than what occurs between the bells. It's a turning point in the history of All Japan, the signaling of the start of a new era. Mitsuharu Misawa is the face of a new generation and he has led the charge against the old guard and come out on the other side victorious. It's a stunningly simple but effective story of the young gun overcoming the top star in the game. As for the match itself, it is undoubtedly an excellent piece of work. Don't kill me on this though, but I think it falls just shy of the 5 star rating. Especially comparing it to the Tenryu Triple Crown match from the year before, you can see the holes in this one a little clearer. The second act does sag, and it lacks the little spark of violence and intensity that the May 26 match set us up for. I have this match at 4 and 3 quarter stars myself, just shy of the perfect score, but a timeless classic nonetheless. Although Misawa got the win here, it's clear to see that it wasn't the most decisive of victories. Yes, he went toe to toe with the ace and won, but the finish was a flash pinfall, a brief moment of weakness. Not the decisive put down that can put away Suruta quite yet. And Saruta was far from ready to step away quietly. For that reason, a rematch was inevitable. Three months after Misawa made history in the Budokan, he finds himself toe-to-toe -to -toe with the ace once again. But that title of ace, the top native worker in Japan, the best of all Japan, is slipping from Jumbo's fingers. Misawa's star is on the rise, and a victory here, clean over Jumbo Saruta, will cement him in the eyes of all as the ace of All Japan Pro Wrestling. But Jumbo's not done yet. Not by a long shot. The match opens with Saruta smothering Misawa with big strikes and power moves in an attempt to ground the more athletic wrestler. He batters Misawa with stiff elbows and knees to the gut early on. Misawa, however, again relies on his athleticism to get the advantage back. In fact, for most of the first half, it's Misawa's technical acumen and speed that earn him control over Saruta. At the same time, Misawa has also begun to add layers to his work as a heavyweight worker. Where big flying moves earned him control in the June match, we find Misawa relying more and more on that elbow strike of his. He blasts Saruta with a big series of elbows that Saruta sells to perfection, highlighting what a threat those elbows are to his chances of victory. But Saruta didn't come to the Budokan to be embarrassed again by Misawa. If Misawa's going to hit hard, Saruta will hit back harder, overwhelming Misawa with the power behind his strikes as well as his size advantage. Saruta's strikes consistently put him in advantageous positions to retain control over Misawa, even as Misawa fights back with his own patented elbow strike. In fact, Misawa's elbows are powerful enough that a few strung in succession kill Saruta's momentum and allow him to snatch away control, and a few stiff kicks from his Tiger Mask days help him stagger the ace as well. But Saruta's not here to play. He blasts Misawa with his own elbow and starts bombing on Misawa, a lariat, a pile driver, and his signature double arm suplex. Not enough. When Misawa again uses his speed to cut off Saruta, he goes for a springboard headbutt only for Saruta to drive him head first into the mat. Saruta tries to put Misawa away with the jumping body scissors, but only gets a two. When he follows up with a backdrop suplex attempt, Misawa counters into a pinfall only for Saruta to roll through and almost get the win the same way Misawa did back in June. 
it's clear Saruta wants to put Misawa away as he again goes for the backdrop suplex, only for Misawa to block and nail multiple elbow strikes. It's at this point that Saruta has enough of this uppity youngster coming for his spot. And Saruta snaps. What follows may be the most intense moment in the feud yet as Saruta foregoes any semblance of wrestling skill and technique and resorts to battering Misawa with punches, tossing him to the outside and nailing him with a chair. But the kid won't stay down. Again, Misawa's elbows make the difference as he creates just enough of an opening to nail a gorgeous plancha over the top rope and a brutal elbow from the top rope to almost put Saruta down. Misawa matches Saruta's intensity, battering the wounded ace in the corner. Misawa is unafraid. He's willing to meet Jumbo head on. But Saruta is a desperate man. And desperate men can sometimes do amazing things. Stiff headbutts break up Misawa's flurry, and Saruta nails a beautiful dropkick and a power slam to get a two count on Misawa. But the kid won't stay down. Misawa counters a powerbomb attempt with a hurricane rana, and his elbows stun Saruta enough to allow him a bridging German suplex for the two. At this point, the match starts to fall apart as both men start feeling the effects of exhaustion. A few blown spots display that Saruta might not have the steam it takes to put down the more well-conditioned Misawa. Unfortunately for Misawa, he goes to the aerial well one time too many as Saruta catches him attempting to come off the top with a powerful superplex. He nails Misawa with a bone-crunching backdrop suplex, but Misawa kicks out. Already, Misawa is displaying a superhuman resiliency, just enough for him to land another brutal elbow that drops Saruta. But Saruta finds just enough strength to wham Misawa with a stiff lariat and follow up with a second backdrop to get the pinfall victory and revenge for his humiliation in June. What the September match lacks in historical significance, it makes up for in pure heat and intensity. Saruta's performance as the pissed off aging ace clinging desperately to his spot at the top, finally snapping and going wild on the new hotshot on the scene, might be one of the finest single performances in wrestling, and probably the best individual performance we've seen on this project so far. For me, this is a breezy 24 minutes, not a single bit of downtime with one of the most intense finishing stretches ever. Five stars. Classic. Both the Saruta Misawa singles matches from 1990 are stone cold classics, with the debate raging on to this day as to which of the two is better. For me, I place the September match ahead for its spectacle and intensity, but it's easy to see someone selecting the more historically significant Misawa victory first. The war between Misawa and Saruta was far from over, and their rivalry would rage on. In fact, as heated as things were already in the battle for All Japan supremacy, the gang war between Suruda-gun and Misawa's Super Generation Army would only get more intense when betrayal would mar Misawa's side. Akira Tawe, the former sumo who stood by Misawa's side when he knocked out Jumbo the first time, would defect to Suruda-gun. This would instigate a rivalry that would come to shape the rest of the early 90s, and even the years to come. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for putting up with the delay. I know it's been over a month since I've uploaded a new video. It's because I uh, flew out to the US and to Canada and by the time I got home there were Wi-Fi issues. It's a whole big thing but now I'm back. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for sticking it out. Uh, I love making these videos about All Japan and you guys always there watching, leaving your comments below. It's really a great motivator for me. So please, if you like this video, share it with someone else. Uh, leave a comment down below, like the video, and of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. If you want to see me perform some live stand-up comedy, please like my page on facebook.com 
slash the Joseph Montesilio. Thank you so much for watching this one. I know it was a long one. It was pretty big. Thank you again and have a good one.